Um, he uh, obviously went out and met with Dr. Elitrosh today. Um, they subsequently gave him a PRP injection. And uh, of what we know right now, it will be a couple days of rest and then two weeks of no throw. During that period, we will use that to evaluate what those next steps look like. So um, I guess the simplest way to say it is there's still things um, that we will tell you as we learn more. But so uh, more information to go. Is it, uh, you, obviously right shoulder, is it considered a strain? So the PRP is there to help heal something. Right. And so like. I think the, the easiest way to think about it is probably a, a small tear in the slap, slap tear. Yeah. But um, they still think this is something that he can pitch through. Um, so our fingers are crossed that that's true. Oh, well, is this pretty encouraging news? I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, we don't know what exactly happened in the off season, right? So we only know what we know. We ask questions. But there has been a, a time where he was going and then felt some discomfort and started going again and now we're back to that discomfort. So in terms of like how to feel good about something right now, I guess this is probably better than what we could have been told because you know he still has a chance. But you know, anytime you're dealing with this, it's not great news. So we have to sort of see if we can't manage through this from a physical therapy standpoint and hopefully we can get him back on the mound. Forgive me, but does he Dr. Alan Trash, is he still in Florida or did he have to go back to LA? He was in LA. Jack Spirits pretty high that he'll probably... Say that again? Jack Spirits pretty I have not spoken with Jack. Uh, you know, I spoke with him yesterday prior to his departure. Um, you know, obviously, I mean, anytime you're going to see a doctor, to, to your point, that's concerning. So, um, you know, we're, our fingers are crossed that this is something that uh, he can work through and get back on the mound. Well, we're just you, you, you've collected depth, um, but not, you know, now is there for that opening spot in the rotation? How do you see things? Well, I think, you know, it's a competition. Obviously, Woody's going to get an opportunity. Uh, Verhagen's going to get an opportunity. And, and, you know, you saw a young lefty today go. I mean, like, everybody's going to get chances. But, you know, I think the, the, the more pressure it just puts on the other four to make sure we can count on them. So, you know, then the pressure starts to become, you know, how much can you take? Do you look beyond? I know you're always looking at opportunistic, but given what you went through last year with pitching, does your urgency shift a little bit to look beyond these walls? I mean, it's always we're always looking beyond these walls. The, the reality is, is, though, that that group is thinning out quite a bit right now. So, um, you know, we'll we'll pay attention to what's out there on the market, and if there's something that makes sense, we'll do it. Does Brooks factor in? I mean, Brooks sure. started a bit. absolutely. Okay, absolutely. Um, pitched well today too. Right, so that's great to see. Yeah. Well, what are they telling you about Alex? Is it the same thing. Did he have PRP also? Uh, no, he had a stem cell injection, um, and for him, I think we, we know the timeline is pretty, you know, firm. So you know, we're looking at probably sometime in late May, early June on him. What do you like about uh, Dickerson now that that's official? Well, you know, I think we were very candid about uh, looking for a left-handed bat. Um, we were in a lot of different discussions on a lot of different players. But ultimately, we ended up getting him signed. And, and I think, you know, ultimately, he fits the profile that we're looking for. It gives us some flexibility in the outfit. The, uh, you said, just to be clear, May or early June for Alex. Is that in part because he'll go through a full spring training style then as opposed to this? Well, he's time? also no throw. Right, for two weeks, they were saying? At There's least. Oh, okay. okay. At least. Thanks. And we're not... You know, look, we want to put him in a position to try to be successful. And so, you know, we're not going to try to rush something by a week or two just to find him take a step back. So, you know, we're going to put, you know, safety first, and hopefully it, our strategy works for him. Well, that's, and those are the same parameters. I mean, you could probably copy-paste those for Jack as well. Yeah, I think it's a little different strategy on the, on the actual therapy and what they go through. So, um you know, right now, I think, again, we want to, like, get him back here, let all the doctors huddle, and then we'll determine what that looks like. What is Reyes' actual issue? Um, he has a, uh, uh, a frayed labor. And when you bring him back, do you, do you want to build him up to potentially start? Or, uh, I mean, I think, like, I, yeah, I, I mean, these questions are sort of silly, right? Like, we, we, need, like, we need him to, like, first be able to, like, take steps. And when we start taking those steps, then you can determine, like, what's the best role, what makes sense to get him back quicker or, or, or longer. 
where's the club at that time? Um, again, I think like from a medical standpoint, we sort of understand that this is going to be where are we mid March right now, so we know it's basically two and a half to three months you're looking at with him, and so determining like how he'll be used or what that role looks like is I, I can't answer that. Will Jack spend his full two weeks in no throw in LA and then return here, or do you expect him to come back here? I think he's going to come back here, but I'm not 100. percent Have you heard in your conversations with other clubs or general managers that other teams are having similar situations where guys were hurt in the offseason or going to the offseason but never had a chance to, to meld with the, with the club. I mean, I've read a few things yeah. from here or there, but I haven't, like, called up and, and actually pulled it. I didn't know if it came up in other conversations. No, nah, not really. Okay. Not that I've heard. Okay. Did you guys have a – I know how much you guys met with I mean, Holly and the coach and met with the players before the lockout just so there could be, like, some kind of plan for them. Did you all have – if you experience any trouble, here's what to do. Stop, be conservative. Did you, did you have some kind of direction I mean, I there? would think everybody that's been around this game sort of understands, like, how to think through that. Sure. But, um, you know, we didn't have, like, a, a written strategy for what to do there. Okay. Um, and I, to dive even deeper in that, I'd have to just ask Adam what it was said. I don't know. Okay. I, I, just, I mean, just from a planning perspective, I wondered about that. Feeling out, be conservative. I mean, that's like kind Standard of like normal, stuff. yeah. Sure. So I don't, yeah, that's not something that would shock me. Well, no, I, I yeah. wouldn't shock me either. I don't know how much you guys plan. So that's, I was actually trying to give you a compliment. No, my point is, is like, I would hope the athlete would know to stop. Okay. Sort of related to that, were there contractual gray areas? Like Ali, for example, mentioned that when he met with Jack before the lockout, there was an awareness that maybe Jack had a little bit of lingering soreness. Would Jack have been able to seek like a private doctor while locked out? Yeah. Okay, and that would have been contractually acceptable under even with the home. Yeah. Okay. I mean, a lockout, the, he's a human being, and if he needed right. medical service, he could go seek it. All I had said before the game that Molina was going to be reporting Monday. Has anything changed in that regard? No. Um, among the pitchers, there are a lot of them you talked about. You mentioned the other lefty. What did you think about today? I was good. Yeah, around the zone, it was uh, you know a good first outing. You know, you think about his second half last season. Uh, he really like you know put his foot on the gas and took a great step forward, which was encouraging. So yeah, I, I think like you know guys just getting back on the mound in this you know competitive environment, which is great to see. Well, what drew you to Brooks, uh, Aaron Brooks, uh, the way he strike thrower, um, you know uh, someone that gets ground balls. Just, you know, when you look at the guys that we ended up trading for last offseason, we were trying to find that type of profile in different people because it just was very successful for us. And he can swing, right? Like, meaning he could be a starter or a reliever. How many uh, how many pitchers would you like to leave camp with ready to throw more than depends, 50 pitches? It depends what the roster looks like. No, that are more than ready to throw more than 50 pitches. Depends what the roster looks like. Oh, I see. Okay. So we, we were able to take more than 13, then might be a different answer. Add that. Well, I got you. Do you have an idea of when you're going to know that for sure? I would. I was on a call yesterday. I, you know, I hopefully they will deal with this sooner rather than later for planning purposes. Did you get a read on Jordan Hicks's bullpen? How it went the other day and how he recovered? I heard it was very good. I did not personally watch it, but <laughs> feedback was uh, positive. How uh, meaningful was Dickerson's performance as a designated hitter over the years? He's had a pretty good OPS in that category. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously, like, you know, we, we get an extra hitter this year. So, like, trying to find someone and, and how to, like, separate those at-bats is something that we have to be cognizant of. And, and so um, we're a very right-handed club, so having someone from the left side was critical for us. And, uh, you know, I think he's excited to be here, which is, to me, very important. Um, you know, I think that the fact that he wanted to be a Cardinal speaks volumes. Oviedo also in, in the mix as the potential start fifth starter. Sure, but you know, like all these guys are competing for jobs. But the good news is, you know, there's names we're talking about. Wood, Woodford down the stretch last year at least gives him some clout heading into this race. Wood for me. I mean, he pitched really well last year, and uh, you know, I think he's coming in this camp trying to win a spot. You know, regardless of uh, injury. I mean, I think he wants to be a starter. Thanks. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.